Hello gamers, my name is Duma and welcome to the game room. Today we have another ultimate one bar build. This is the ultimate one bar warden bow build, which parses between 83 and 87k depending on the setup and uses no trial or arena gear. However, in order to hit the upper 80s, which you see here, the mythic item harpooner's waiting kilt is needed. But if you don't have it or don't want to use it, no worries, you'll be totally fine and able to parse in the lower 80s, which is extremely respectable for a one bar build using no trial, arena, or mythic items. If you are interested in a written guide or many other ESO builds and guides, especially aimed at newer players, make sure to check out the website dumagaming.com, your website for Elder Scrolls Online builds and guides. All right, let's take a look. For this build, I am a Khajiit, which barely edged out the other stamina classes by a very small margin. So if your Warden is not a Khajiit, it's not a huge deal at all. We have all 64 points in stamina, using the Thief Mundus and Lava Foot Soup for our food. For our potion, we are using Essence of Weapon Power to restore stamina and buff us with Major Brutality and Savagery for extra weapon damage and critical rating. We already get Major Brutality from one of the Warden abilities we are using, but it will make sense while we overlap the two when we get to the rotation section at the end. For our gear, we are using the 5 piece Kindra set, created in Divines with the Stamina Enchant. This gives us weapon damage, weapon crit, and most importantly, buffs us with Major Berserk, increasing our damage by 10%. We also buff nearby allies with Minor Berserk, increasing their damage by 5%. This coupled with the Warden Animal Companion Passive Advanced Species gives us a total of 20% increased damage. We are also using the Zogvin set, which gives us weapon crit, physical pin, and buffs us with minor force, increasing our crit damage by 10%, which stacks really nice with the Khajiit Racial Passive, Feline Ambush, which increases our critical damage by 12%, so 22% critical damage increase in total. We have our jewelry traded in Bloodthirsty with the weapon damage glyphs. We are also using a bow traded in Precise with the Flame Enchant. I will have a video out soon as to how and why Flame and Poison Enchants are superior to Double Dot Poisons or PvE damage but it requires a little extra CP, which we'll talk about here shortly. If your CP is lower, then you'll be better off here using Double Dot Poison. For our monster set, we're using two One Piece crit sets of Grunwolf and Slime Crawl, both medium and divines with stamina chance. You can also use the Veli monster set, which parses close to the crit sets, but I found the crit sets to be more consistent. To go Super Saiyan for parses or easier content where you aren't taking a lot of damage, you can use the Harpooner's Waiting Kilt, which takes up the pants slot. So you would need to replace your shoulders or helm with Kinra's to make sure you get the five set. This will add somewhere around three to five K to your parse with this setup, depending on individual ability. Be mindful using this in difficult PVE content where you're likely to take a lot of damage or just consistent damage because it takes 10 full seconds to reach maximum stacks with the kilt and you lose half of them every time you take damage. So once you get to 10 stacks, if you get hit, you're now at five stacks. You get hit again, and now you're at zero stacks, and you have to start all over. It is an option though for you, and it works really, really strong. For our abilities, we are using the Warden ability Growing Swarm, which is a strong damage over time effect that also debuffs the target with minor vulnerability, increasing the target's damage taken by 5%, and does a bit of AoE damage to nearby targets. Next, we have the Warden ability Bird of Prey, which gives us a very fast movement speed increase when used via Major Expedition and buffs us passively with Minor Berserk, increasing our damage by another 5%. Next is the Bow ability Lethal Arrow, which is our main spammable. Next is the Warden ability Bull Niche, which helps with sustain, passively purges negative effects from us or when it's refreshed, and heals us when it's used. Next is the Warden ability Subterranean Assault, which is a very hard hitting ability that fires twice after two short three second delays. This is a very strong ability for both AoE and single target. Lastly, we are using the Warden Ultimate Wild Guardian, which passively does both single target and AoE damage. It also has an on-use burst ability when used that is increased by 100% additional damage when the target is below 25% HP. If you want to add an actual heal like Vigor, then you can replace Bird of Prey with it. Your damage will take a little bit of a hit, but if you have a healer doing their job well and keeping combat prayer on you, then you only lose 2% damage from the advanced species passive, which is a small price to pay for not dying if you take a lot of damage. If you're doing overworld content, then the 2% doesn't matter at all due to this build being way, way strong for that type of content. You will likely be one-shotting most everything but bosses. For our blue CP, we're using the Slottables Fighting Finesse, Backstabber, Master at Arms, and Deadly Aim. For red, we have Boundless Vitality, Fortified, Rejuvenation, and Bloody Renewal. The rotation is super simple. We start with Netch and our Potion before combat. Then we open with Sub Assault, Ultimate, Swarm, and Three Arrows. From there, our rotation is on a count of six, starting with Sub Assault, 
followed by five arrows, replacing an arrow with Swarm or our ulti as they become available. I mentioned earlier about overlapping Major Brutality with Netch and our potion, and here's why. We start with Netch before combat and don't use it again until our stamina is around 20%. This will really let us push out a ton of extra damage with extra arrow globals rather than refreshing Netch along the way. After the initial use, only use it when you drop below 20% stamina. Don't try to replace this with something else for more damage because it's used infrequently. It's completely necessary in order to sustain a full parse or long boss fights. And that's it gamers, the ultimate one bar warden bow build. I'll leave you with a quick parse clip of about 84,000 without using the waiting kilt mythic. If you're interested in a written guide for this build and many other Elder Scrolls online builds and guides, make sure to check out Doomagaming.com, your website for ESO builds and guides. If you're interested in live gameplay, I'm a member of the Elder Scrolls Online official stream team and stream regularly at The Game Room on Twitch. Also, feel free to join our community in Discord. Both links will be in the description. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.